Okay, thank you, Molly. Now that we're recording, we can officially start. <laughs> uh, I'll just repeat that. The, the purpose of this webinar is to respond to some questions that um, everybody needs to be clear on. Even our team uh, isn't clear on a lot of these uh, things. And so Molly's here and Deanna's here and, and we'll be recording this so that we can share that with, um, with all the families who attended the first webinar and then we'll even share it uh, more broadly. But there were some questions that were answered incorrectly, so we want to clarify those things and clear any, up any miscommunication. And then some confusion that, um, that many families have about what's offered and when and how they'll pay. And they're just, it's, uh, it's amazing with, with, the, with the beginning of any new product or service, um, it makes almost little difference how much you prepare. <laughs> There's still a million questions that need to be answered. And, and so I've started, um, having everybody send me their questions, um, all of them, even questions that they know how to respond to, will all go on this FAQ doc. And I'm gonna use that actually. It's not pretty, I didn't have time to make it. You'll see how I started and you'll see what, the, you'll see what it will look like eventually, uh, but you'll see that there are a lot of questions there that I haven't produced um, kind of um, formal responses to that, uh, that we will. Um, and some of them will take a little time because we'll need to counsel as a team uh, to answer some of them. Most of them, uh, I think we can, we can respond to and answer. At least you'll know uh, generally how we're, how we're feeling. But uh, that's the purpose of this webinar is to do those three things. And um, so I thought it might be best, my husband went to SUU, I'm at SVU. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the chat right now. So this is in Virginia. Thus, all the trees and super, super green, although it's green this time in Utah too, which is not nearly as many trees, certainly not this tall. But at some point in this webinar, maybe I'll walk outside and show you this, this building because it's pretty impressive. It's a really pretty campus. Um, and uh, it's kind of the K, it's kind of the 13 plus of, I don't know, I don't know if I should say that anymore. I used to tell people it's the 13 plus of, of AHS's K-12. <laughs> um, but it isn't uh, exactly. Uh, it's 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 a lot more liberal, and it's um, and it's honor code, and um, the faith connections are more like BYU than they are at uh, at American Heritage. At, at American Heritage, uh, the gospel is weaved in and out of curriculum, uh, whereas uh, at at institutions like BYU and I think SVU, uh, religion is a class. Um, the gospel and principles of the gospel don't get woven into the curriculum quite the way they do. Um, and so, so intentionally at American Heritage School, um, when when appropriate and when authentic, we uh, you know we don't we don't teach many non skills based subjects without making a connection to a principle, um, a gospel principle. When you're studying symbiosis. You're studying friendships, uh, relationships that animals have in each other. So naturally, we're going to talk about the relationships that we have with each other, and we do that throughout science and history and literature and art, music, and um, the geography and, 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 and health and leadership and constitution studies, and we can just go on and on. We don't do that quite as much in math. Well, in fact, we do it very little in math. And we do it a little bit, uh, we do it somewhat in uh, language arts where, again, where it's appropriate um, memorizations and some of the passages that we're reading. And, and, um, and so where, it's, where it can be done very authentically and, genuine, and make genu genuine connections, that's how we connect uh, principles to these strong academics. And that's not, un you, know, you know, most of you are familiar with that. I start with that because I think it's really important. Sometimes we take for granted the things that are so common, uh, but that is probably the most important thing from a curriculum development standpoint and a philosophy of curriculum development. That's the most important thing to us that when we have the opportunity to deepen faith, to build character, to develop a love of freedom, patriotism, the, that we take those opportunities at every moment. And, and, and there are many more opportunities than, than most schools will afford in, um, in, in their curriculum development. Okay, on to questions. I have a document here, I'm gonna share it so you can see what we're, what we're working off of. And you tell me what you think would be the best, the best idea here. I thought, I thought it might be good to, I thought it might be good to simply use this document 
And I could, and I could go through these questions that have already been asked and clarify these questions. Um, and these I've already done in writing. So you could, lit you could literally just read these and, uh, and then we could carry on with the ones that I haven't. All of these are other questions that, that uh, members of the staff has, uh, have sent to me that are coming uh, from you. Uh, and and I, I imagine many of them, well, do you think that's a, is that a good way to approach this? hour that we have for me to just to quickly go through these questions and answer them or would you just like to open it up right now and ask questions i wonder i kind of think maybe open it up to those that are here and then go over this okay and we'll, we'll probably get to a lot of them while you're just asking peter yeah. i think maybe before you even open it up if you can just briefly go over um you know this is what's offered to these people this is what comes with it this is how long that's going to be offered, and then it'll be separate. You know, just and then the questions might be answered. I guess is what I'm saying. So just go over, you know. Then let me. Okay, let's do. Uh, okay, then let me take. Let me take ten minutes to just go through some of the most high level questions that are on this, and uh, let's see if we can cross off um, some of the some of the most common denominators here and the questions that we have. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So maybe a hybrid of the two, does that sound fair? Okay, what does it include? You can read there, it includes access to a live study group where children learn together of similar ages and it includes access to a live class. The study groups are about 20, 20 students uh, each uh, on average. And the live classes are about 60 students each. That amounts to about 15 screens and 40 screens, uh, respectively, um, which is about half of what we've had um, in previous years. Um, not all students attend all classes. And so uh, sometimes people hear 60 and they think that's a lot. It's really not very difficult for the coach to manage the, those students. Um, even, at, even with a cap of 100, it's, um, it's, it's a pretty, it's a really positive experience and students who want to share do and it gives the coach the ability to, to act, you know, to solicit, the, you know, information, uh, solicit responses and sharing from all the students. Um, Peter, uh -huh. already this brings up a question. It says, what does Lift Ed include? And then it talks about Power Hour Plus. The, it includes that right now as a special promotion, but in the future, those are two separate offerings. So um, I'm not sure in that, little paragraph it differentiates between what let, comes with just lift bed and what comes with power hour plus let me just keep going then uh, because it, it, it i do cover i do cover that here just a little bit okay during the 2022-23 pilot membership will include access to the live study group 39 dollars a month per student and the live power hour class 49 dollars a month per student the regular cost is 88 dollars per month per student for both of those services Beginning in 2023-24, next year, members may enroll in content only with, live, with the live class component added on optionally. Also, an enrollment option will be added for the 2023-24 school year and will be the equivalent of 10 months of the, of the monthly price as an annual enrollment option. So that's not something that we have this year either as far as like um, how they will pay. Right now, it's just a monthly a monthly service and it includes power hour and it includes access to the content. What is the term of the lifted enrollment? The term is 12 months if you're signing up now, which most, which all of our families will this year uh, sign up before the school year starts. Uh, maybe in future years we'll, we'll not close enrollment before the school year starts. Um, I haven't really decided. We can't decide that until we see how that works. But um, for everybody who's signing up right now, they're agreeing to pay from July 1st all the way through June 30th of the next year. So they're paying when they check out right now, they pay for the first month. They won't be billed again until August 1st for the next month. Is that clear? We do that because we're paying coaches regardless of whether they stay with that service or not. Now in the future, when someone just signs up for content, perhaps next year, family signs up for just content, they cancel that anytime. It doesn't cost us anything for them to come and go with the content, but it does cost us 
uh, money to, to employ and train and support a coach for that class, regardless of how many students are in that class. And so what you're really paying for this year is the coach. That's all you're paying for this year is the coach. <laughs> there are many other costs that you're not paying for at $22.50 or $30.80 a month. It doesn't cover all of our costs. It certainly doesn't cover any of our development costs. The, the millions of dollars that we're putting into software development and curriculum development, you're not paying any of that. Uh, but those are all donated funds. And that's why we can offer it for so, for so cheap. Okay, what is a founding family? We consider founding families as development partners of a new service or product of AHS worldwide. Founding families receive a significant discount to participate during an inaugural year of a service or product in exchange for their willingness to share feedback throughout through focus groups, webinars, and surveys. Founding families provide an essential role in supporting a, a learn fast and prove fast development strategy for all new products and services. We talked a lot about that in the first webinar, so we probably don't need to uh, spend any more time there. It's a two-way street though. I guess that's the point that we're making here is we, we, want, we need founding families to help us. And, and, and for helping us, we provide a significant discount and forever. Um, what is the discount to participate during the pilot year? Um, I don't think anybody's unclear about this one. Lifetime members, 75% monthly members, 65% former and free members, 50% and new members, 30%. Are there any other benefits of being a Lift Ed founding family? Yes, there are, two specifically. It's access to all the content we ever produce for, for Lift Ed. And if you could see, I'm not, gonna, I, I'm not gonna share all the details because I don't know them all, but we are going to build a lot of additional content for, for Lift Ed. And, uh, and all that content will be included um, for free for our founding families. They may be add-ons though for future families that, that come to Lift Ed. They might want this package of content and maybe this package of content and, and we could chop it up and divide it up in ways that allow families to have access to just what they want. For founding families, they'll just have access to all of it in some kind of a library uh, of sorts, similar to family school. The second benefit is that um, you're probably familiar with software. Software, it's a similar kind of thing. Um, a lot of times as software develops, the, the, the piece of software gets so robust, so comprehensive that they, they take a piece of it, the most substantial pieces, and they put it here in the basic level. And then they have an, another level, right? And maybe uh, a plus level, and then they have a pro level. And I'm not saying that's what we'll call them, but it's very possible and very likely that we'll have different tiers of the service itself for content. And what we're saying to founding families is that you're, you're that, whatever that highest level is of software, that's what you are to us. So you'll, you'll have an account that's grandfathered to include every feature that we build into it. Now there are services that we'll add to this platform as well. And anytime it's a service, meaning if there's a, a live person that we're paying to provide a service, a grader, to get you a transcript, uh, to give feedback to your children, to teach a class, those are not included because those are the things that, are, that they cost, uh, they, they're, they're, they're called variable costs, whereas other things are fixed costs. And normally we have good donors who, who help us to develop those, 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 those pieces. And so we don't need to cover um, we don't need to cover those costs with enrollment revenue. And so we can give that discount or we can give that, that, that benefit to all of our founding families to have access to everything that we build onto the platform. Are there, can I use LiftEd independently in my homeschool or cooperative? I think there have been a lot of questions. Molly has told me that a lot of families are asking questions that, that get to the implementation of the, of the resource. And although we have a real kind of a specific user in mind, it doesn't mean that you can't use it any way that you want to. And so if you want to use it in a co-op, you want to use it to share with your children together on the couch, and then, um, and then they can join a live class on Power Hour, you could do that. If a small school, and we do have a school in Boise who's using a lot of this content, they're going to go to an independent learning lab and they're all going to jump on their iPads and learn for about a half hour. And then they're gonna to go to class and do the flip class uh, there on, on their campus. And so you can use this content and this platform any way that you can imagine it being used. There's, we're not limiting anybody in its, in its application. Um, 
Families will pay for each level though. So a co-op won't come to us and say, hey, we want access for our co-op. Co They'll organize independently and their families will pay for access to Lift Ed. And we have so many things that we're building to support these learning communities. Um, we're just getting started in that area. I can show that to you later if you're interested in seeing that. I'm gonna skip this one. We can come back to it. What is a family education center? It, I'm not skipping it because it's not important. I'm skipping it because I think it's, it, it's not one of those highest priority questions. So we'll come back to that. What are the qualifications and requirements to organize a family education center? Um, you can read through that. We're, we're, we're gonna have this posted in the next couple of days. So I'll share that with everybody. Current and near free members also get Lift Ed and Power Hour Plus with access to family school curriculum as long as they sign up by June 1st. So this is not true. Um, um, free members never get free access to, uh, to family school. Um, complimentary access to family school is for, is for Lift Ed members. So if someone is a Lift Ed member, then they have access to family school. They also have access to family school if they're not a Lift Ed member, if they have a lifetime membership or they're paying for family school through a monthly service. So they're either paying for family school and have access to it or have paid for it, lifetime members, or they're a Lift Ed member and they just get it for free. Um, so if we have a Lift Ed member who is using Lift Ed um, and they want to teach family school, uh, a couple of days a week or one day a week or, or however they want to do it, uh, then they could do that uh, without paying for family school. Does that make sense? Okay. I see yeses except for Molly. And that's, so I need Molly to shake her head yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence uh, says as long as they signed up for Lift Ed. So do you see what I'm saying? They yeah. get as long as they sign up for Lift Ed, they get access to family school curriculum. Oh yeah, current and near free, free members also get Lift Ed. And as long well, as they sign up for Lift Ed is what that very end of the sentence is supposed to say. And it's June 1st, uh, is that, did I pull that out of nowhere? Or is that somehow a an actual date of anything? So June 1st, is, it has nothing to do with it, yeah. Um, so, yeah, June. Take that off. Yeah, yeah, we can take that. I this I'm not gonna make the answers. I, I'm just this is what you you wrote. And so right. we, I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna go it's through just, and clarify where I can. And yeah. So from this, from this point on in the webinar, these are questions that have been presented to me. Some of the questions aren't um, I can tell there I can tell there's a misunderstanding, and so we'll clear that up. Um, and we'll all update these questions, Molly. Thank you. <laughs> so Peter. Yeah. We're more than 10 minutes into your explanation now. I wonder uh -huh. if, um, if it would be a good time to ask sure. questions of. Yeah, that's great. Would you guys like to ask questions or you want me to keep going through this? Heidi has a question. Yeah, so I just want, wondered if I could restate kind of as what it will look like for a parent. And you can tell me if I have the right idea or the wrong idea. So I will plan time for them to research on Lift Ed that they'll get on and explore and get on with their community of friends. And I'll have time for the one hour a day power hour. And then besides that, I will have I'll just plan time for them to do math and language arts separately, correct? Yeah, you got it. That's exactly right. right. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank and, you. And next year, it's very possible. Um, I don't know if it's next year or the year after, but at some point, we will provide math and language arts instruction, not just student facilitated, but coached. And that will be an, an, an additional, it'll be like another power hour. It could be like two more power hours, one for math and one for language arts that just focuses squarely on a daily math instruction um, lesson or a daily language arts lesson. And so ultimately, even the K-8 experience will be pretty, will be comprehensive in its ability to, to help a student learn independent of a parent who might not have the time to, or would prefer not to, or, um, or, or just simply 
appreciates us providing that service. Uh, it'll be an it'll be an add on. Um, but right now, the way it's working, you 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 got it. That's exactly that's ex that's exactly right, Heidi. Um, okay. And it doesn't affect our older students, our ninth and older. We just look at the other options that we've right. Yeah, okay. That's right. HS online is is still the the, the same, and and it will be improving in 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 ways as well this year um, for our seven twelve students who want to stay in that accredited. Um, sorry, I shouldn't be saying credit. Everything's accredited for the four credit uh, bearing um, path that AHS Online provides. Okay, thank you. Angela. Hi. <laughs> oh, sorry, I skipped you, Cammie. We'll come right back to you. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to just say um, that I think it's really awesome. And it's really neat to watch how far family school has come um, over the years and see that so many people see the value in it. And I tell everybody I know about it. So <laughs> I am grateful, really super grateful for everything that everybody's done and, um, and trying to make it affordable for everybody. And I think it's awesome. Um, so my questions, so I do have two kids that are, that they just did the, um, high school age power hour. I don't even think it's really high school age. I think it, like it's just, they're, they just turned 16, mm -hmm. but they don't want to do the accredited AHS. Well, I'm sure they'd love to, if they could go to work and earn the money for it, but <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. happened yet. Um, so I would, so can I go ahead and put them in what they've just been doing, which is like with Dr. Pablo and everything and keep them, or are they going to be super too old for that? If they keep them in the, like the lift ed, just keep them in left dead and have them go to the power hour afterward. Are they going to feel dumb because they're too old or do you think they can go? Yes, that's a great question. I was talking with somebody else about this and we do have a handful of, of, of high school students that participate in our audit, middle school audit program. We don't have a, we don't have an audit program for high school and we likely will not have one. Um, Peter, yeah. can I jump in here? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, we have, Dr. Pablo was just talking to me this morning that he has been receiving requests from parents with high school students um, to be able to do audit. And so he, I can take your name down, Angela. And he, as of this morning, <laughs> he's planning to have a focus group with those parents um, next week to find out what it is exactly that you're wanting. And then we can kind of discuss that and what we would be able to offer and what that would cost to if we offered it. So um, I'll just write your name down. And um, and if you have his email address, if you haven't already reached out to him, might be a good idea to send him an email. Just to, I don't, I'm sure I could find your email address if you're, if you're signed up, but I'll write your name down at least, okay? That'll be on the 9th at three o'clock. Oh, it's welcome. scheduled even, okay. Thank you, awesome. Molly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have his email somewhere, so I'll reach out to him. I think to I gave it to you, Angela. Yeah. Thank um, you. Hey, Deanna, I'd like to be on that list too. This is Debbie, Debbie Christensen. Okay. Yeah. Deanna, maybe, I, you know, we should definitely just send a survey out. This is how, this is how the middle school audit group came about. Um, it, was, it was one survey that we said, would your middle schoolers like to be in their own group together without the littles? And the feedback was overwhelmingly positive for that. So we just need to do another survey with our families and just ask them, how many of your students would be interested in a 9-12 um, daily hour where they discuss? It may not be daily, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. whatever it is, we could just, it really, come, Angela, the, the answer to that question is if there is enough interest, then, there's, then we'll do it. Um, if there's enough interest at the at the right price, then we'll then we'll do it. Um, that's for us always the always the way that we approach almost everything is: will there be enough impact, and will they be able to pay for it? Whatever it is that we're providing, um, are they interested at this price? I guess, and if and are there enough of them? And if there are, then we do it. Yeah. I see several others in the chat also who are asking to be added. So. Um, Tells you something. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, in fact, it might be it might be more than I can do. Can I can I put Dr. Pablo's? Well, I'll do my best. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, if you have, I'll put Dr. Pablo's um, email address in this um, chat too, so that you can send him an an email and you'll know for sure that you'll be on the list. Okay. There you go. That's that's Dr. Pablo's email address. And then I'll put together a survey, Deanna. It, it was very simple. It'll take me five minutes. It'll be like three or four questions and we'll send it out to all of our families and and we'll just let them know, hey, it came up during our focus group that there might be interest in a high school um, for audit, no credit, um, daily, you know, not daily, but um, live class, live class discussion about uh, some of the courses that the high school students are participating in. And, and we can, you could also put that together if you'd like to, or Pablo can. I do see here that he, um, he's already planned the Zoom for the people who've contacted him. Molly has put the Zoom address actually in the chat. So if you want to attend that on the 9th at three o'clock PM, uh, and look, she also put his message there. Um, then please put that down. And we we could do a survey as well. But but um, that's when the focus group is. Um, and at, I do have a question, Peter. Did we did we? I don't remember hearing on the webinar last time that you would be charged once and then your payments would not resume until August. Didn't say that. Yeah, I just told him. Could yeah. we hold back on that until I can discuss that with you and yeah. some of the other implications? Could could we erase that from all your all's memories <laughs> until we have a chance to yeah. talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, those are the kind of questions that we're getting. And also the members that do the pilot, it sounds to me like if I'm understanding right, the pilot ends on June 30th. So if they want to sign up again, they sign up for Lift Ed and they can do Power Hour Plus, but it'll be separate and things because it's only for the pilot that everything's kind of bundled together. Is that right? Well, That's what I'm uh, A member will never have to re-enroll. They'll be re-enrolled. Uh, they'll have to unenroll from, from, from the service. And so they're enrolling in both of them this year. Next year, they'll be enrolled in both of them. If they don't want both of them, then they'll unenroll. That so sense. that that brings up a question in me, and I guess I also thought of the answer. I thought, okay, if I have both because I did the pilot year, and then I want to drop one, does my price change to the current price? But I guess the answer is no. I have a lifetime discount that remains the same. So if my discount yeah. is sixty five percent, and I drop one of the services, then I will get the other service at sixty five percent of the going price. That's right. The, okay. The only way that they would ever have to pay the full price is if they completely discontinued themselves and canceled it. And then later in a few months or a year later or whatever, they wanted to do lift debt again. They'd just be starting with whatever is offered at that time. Yeah, but it's called, a, it's called an account level discount. It's not a student level discount. It's an account level discount. And so that parent is the account holder. And they could have one child this year and 10 child, children next year, and they get the discount on all of the other nine children. Oh, that's so good to know, because that's a question that I've received is in the counter a child. Thank you. So I have, an, I have a question again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, Debbie, again. So oh. yesterday when we were, or two days ago, I guess when we were talking earlier, I expressed my concern about the, the time zone thing, you know, like we are all in <laughs> American heritage and that's how we want to stay. So uh, currently we attend the 11 o'clock hour class, um, which for us right now is starting at 7 a.m. Yeah. So with Lift Ed, um, the content dropping just an hour before class, like I totally understand how that gets the kids online at the same time. It's that social experience that helps them feel connected and, and yeah. all those things that are really an important and I, I think vital to the student success. Um, I'm just wondering if we sign up for a lift ed, the content is really, uh, that's the basic thing. And then the class is the add on. That's right. Right. So what my kids love more than anything is the class. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, how much of a disadvantage are they going to be at if they do the content after the class hour instead of before the class hour? Even though they don't get that kind of social experience while they're doing the content part? Yeah. Well, it, it is the flip class, right? So they come to class and they jump off of their current knowledge, the knowledge that they gained while learning independently. And um, it doesn't mean, I, 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 let's be honest, Debbie, they're probably, I bet you, I bet you 40%, I did, I did a survey and I can't remember how it was asked, but I remember I got to this, um, well, we were just asking how many were watching the videos before class and about 40% of them weren't even watching the videos before they came to class. They were coming to class because, because they enjoyed being with the other students. Right. <laughs> now that's not ideal, but that's, that's just not ideal for us. It, it, it's not, <laughs> you know where I'm going here. You're the customer, right? And so you're deciding how you want to use the service. And for some families, it's not important to them that they, that they, um, that they watch the video of the teacher and they, now it is, it, it does have an impact on the class though. Um, so when someone comes to class and they haven't studied any of the material and the coach starts talking about something that the teacher talked about, then that, that student can't, that student can't, can't follow quite as well, obviously, and they certainly can't share and, and add to that discussion. If we do um, competitions or games or quizzes, debates, projects related to that content, they can participate, but they can't participate in quite a, a full way as they, they could if they had some of that front-loaded information already, uh, front-loaded content. So if that doesn't, if that's, if, if that's okay to the parent, then well, that, then, it, then it's okay with us. Um, the, 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 real, the real thing that I want to see if we can do is how many other families are in your same boat? It's possible that we might be able to put together a class. Um, <laughs> One well, I'm, I'm like the, I, I think Angela said this, I'm like her, like I tell everybody I know about this and I'm trying to convince people to leave public school to do this <laughs> so, so that we could have a group here that, that was on board like a hundred percent. So I don't know, maybe I'll have some neighbors here who are willing to jump sure. in too, if, if that's a possibility. Um, so I don't know. Sounds like you need to do a family education center in Hawaii. Yeah, we do. Uh, the challenge is that there are other families in Hawaii, but there are very few on our island. Yeah. So to do a family education center, you have to all be on the same island too. That's right. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Debbie, you just fly us out. We'll be more than happy to join you. I'd be happy to. What island are you on, Debbie? And I, uh, Oahu. On Oahu. I just, yeah. I just got back from Oahu and and Clarissa just got back. She's been living there for how many years, Clarissa? Oh, I was there for five years at BYU Hawaii. Where on Oahu do you live? So my husband teaches at the university there. So we're yeah. just like on Moana Street. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What does he teach? Uh, hospitality and tourism management. Okay, that's amazing. I yeah. love BYU Hawaii. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, so. Well, um, my wife and I have never been to, to Hawaii and we just went about a month ago and we stayed at, across, the, across from the PCC. I have a, a friend that goes to the school actually who owns a house right there and we stayed in that house and so we had our first experience in Oahu. I loved it. I loved staying on that north side too. That was way, way far, far superior than I went down to Honolulu for a day and that's as, that's as much as I did down there. <laughs> anyway. Love that. Well, I, I wish we would have known. We would have come over and said hi while you were at the PCC. <laughs> that would have been lovely. Well, like, like somebody already mentioned, um, you get a family education center going and I'll happily come out and help you get it, get it organized and do some training and snorkeling and other things. <laughs> Me too. I'll come with him. <laughs> well, Debbie, I'll, I haven't forgotten about you and we'll keep, we'll keep that in mind, but that's, that's, um, of course, an option for you that you could that you could uh, participate just in the class. Well, what we've typically done with the video content is try and watch it the day before. Um, oh, yeah. So that's kind of been the you know the thing for our, our kids uh, because we know that's super early and it's better to be prepared. Uh -huh. uh, but you know sometimes that has been a challenge, and I can see the difference in my kids, so I recognize the value in their 
coming to class, having been through the content and just having that preparation, you know, I, I think that's really a significant part of it. But one of the reasons that we homeschool is because we wanted to increase the spirit in our home. And <laughs> I just full disclosure this morning, my kids had a hard time getting up. And so my, you know, we had a little contention in our house this morning as they were trying to get to class on time. And uh, anyway, so I'm just trying to figure out, okay, could we really do this an hour earlier? <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, I think I've said my piece. I think everybody's probably heard enough of that, but I'm just, I'm just there, so. Um, okay, there's, a, there's something that I can talk with the developers about. This can, this can be done. Uh, it, it's not something that we have on the list of things for them to do for this fall, but um, what we need is to have a, a way for us, for an administrator to, to, to adjust the time a family sees the content. Um, and that we're going to have to have that at some point. So I just need to talk with them about what it would take to have it and when, when we could expect to have that, um, that built into it. So I guess alternatively, this does raise another question for me, you know, like I really am eager to be one of those founding families that gets that $22 a month kind of a thing. Yeah. But if it doesn't work for us this next year, does that lock me out of that? It does for that. Um, we talked about that in the last one and I quickly said, I don't, I don't see a way, a reason why that wouldn't be okay because I was thinking about you. But that's only half of the reason we're giving the discount, right? We're not just giving the discount so that we can say, thanks for being loyal. Thanks for buying a membership. Thanks for everything you've done. We're also saying we need your help now. And so if we, if we allowed members to use these discounts whenever, there would be that, that urgency that you're feeling, no one would have it, right? And we, yeah. need, we need families to feel that urgency and, and the fear of missing out so that we fill this, this, uh, this first group of, um, of pilot families. Next year, we're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in marketing. There is not a Latter-day Saint family in the world that will not hear about LiftEd next year. That's really dangerous if we haven't worked with... <laughs> a group of families, you see all these questions that you're asking right now. This is why, this is the classic example of why you do a pilot. Right. We're answering and we're thinking about questions as you're asking them sometimes. If we haven't thought through all the questions that you have, then we're certainly not prepared to do that kind of rollout. This is not a launch to us. <laughs> this is a pilot. This is a developmental year and, and it will be a, a really good experience uh, for our families. We know it. But we also need to give them a really good discount for them to feel that, hey, I got something out of this. So that's, 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 that's why. There will be a discount for every family that's been with us uh, that they can exercise in future years. It'll probably be something closer to 50% if I had to guess. Um, but, um, but it won't be what we're offering this year, right? So that we can be true to what we're telling everybody this year that they're getting, it would, what, what, would, what would be dishonest is if we said, we're never going to offer a 75% discount again. And we did, right? <laughs> or you're getting this because you're part of our pilot group. And then next year we offered a 75% discount to everybody. Um, we, so we won't do that. We can't do that. It's kind of like when we, um, the very first year we launched the condensed um, student, student go, um, and no, it was the, um, what did we call that, Deanna? When we condensed it, it's the short and sweet, some version of our content, a condensed version of our open content. and go. Open yes, and go. that's it. Clarissa, hats oh, off. Clarissa. She's I'm the newest on our team. On it. <laughs> Woo. When we launched open and go, we released this lifetime um, membership. It was the first year in 2018. And we said, we're never going to offer this for 50% again, for 50% off again. And we'd haven't. Uh, the most we've offered it to is 30% to families uh, during spring open enrollment. And and so, um, so we want to be true to what we're saying, um, whether people remember it or not, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, so one last question then. Okay. As I'm trying to you gather like families, more, Debbie. <laughs> as I'm trying to gather families and get them to, yeah. to engage in this, and they've never done it before. Um, we, one family in particular, we heard you say in the last meeting that you're looking for families who have never done anything 
with AHS before. Yeah. Um, what can I tell them? Like, how can I, um, if money is the issue, what can I tell them that would kind of incentivize them to jump on now instead of yeah. waiting for a year? Well, like we said in the first webinar, you get a family who's um, who's interested and ex and excited about an alternative to public public school and sign up for the I would say sign up for the lifetime membership and get a seventy five percent discount. Invest in it the same way you did, the same way the same way Heidi did, the same way most of you probably did. Uh, you have lifetime memberships because because you saw using this year after year and. That, that's that's difficult for them because they haven't had an experience. I guess it's it's um, that's the that's that's the way to do it though. That's that's the way to to really um, to get the steepest discount is to invest in the way that you invested and the way that everybody else invested so that they can so that we can feel good about them. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make sure that that was still a possibility if they're if they're if they're ready to jump on, if that's something that they could still do and then they become that lifetime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And it's, and, and this may set, I, I think people think that May 9th is a deadline. It's not a deadline. May 9th is just when we send the next group of we send right. discount codes to the next group of um, free and former members. Um, I don't know how many students do we have enrolled Deanna right now after day two or after day one. I will look for that number and get it to you uh, before this is over. I'll do that right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody else for your patience with me and all that. I think those are those my are questions. Great. Those are great questions, Debbie. I was just kidding with you. You know, I was just joking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yep, of course. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Let's see. I missed Cammie. So I'll go back to Cammie and then Emily. And Deanna, do you have your hand up because you have a question too? I did, but I should have written it down because I did. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, I did have a question. Does that mean I need to get in line? I'm after Emily. Well, is it okay if you do? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Deanna. We don't want anybody to feel like the AHS team is special here, right? <laughs> okay, Cammy, go for it. So I actually have a couple of questions. The first one is I, I'm a lifetime member and I have signed up for LiftEd already. And so I'm being, I'm currently being charged for the old, the original power hour and the lifted power hour. Is that the way that it's supposed to be? And then if so, how long is that going to be for? You'll, you'll only pay for 12 months of lifted uh, when it's all said and done this year. Uh, everybody will, in fact. Um, Deanna, right. wants, Deanna, Deanna wants to talk with me about how those monthly payments come through. You're paying uh -huh. for for power hour right now, because that's a service you're receiving right now. And you'll pay for that one more time in May. Okay. And then at the end of May, you'll stop paying for that. You'll also stop paying for family school. Well, you, you're not paying for family school because you're a lifetime member, but if let's, let's assume you were a monthly member and you've signed up for lift ed, your, your account would in family school would be set, set to a complimentary full access account uh, while you're, while you're then paying for a lift ed and you would, so you'll stop paying for power hour in May as well. Does that make sense? That I, I can right. that. So will I need to um, go on and discontinue that or the, will that just automatically drop off? We're gonna automatically do those. We're gonna do, okay. James is gonna write a script and everybody who's a power hour family, every power hour family will stop paying in May. Okay, and then, and then my other question was um, about, the the um timing the for the preparation part of it and for the actual class mm -hmm. um i understand that it's um you know this is a pilot year and so you're just kind of getting things started um will there be a point at, at some time that there will be either more classes at different times being offered and also um I'm one of the families that sometimes my kids like to watch the videos the day before because they're busy right up until Zoom time. Um, and so what is the possibility of that being changed? It's a high possibility. It's very, very likely that we'll have an AM and a PM option okay. uh, that, we're, that we're working with. 
And the reason is because it's very likely that we end, we ultimately, as the program grows, you can imagine that it'll become more and more cost effective for us to, to hire, to hire um, coaches full time that can cover more classes and, and, um, but also as the program grows, we're going to have more and more requests for a later time, uh, whether they're in another country, like, like in Jennifer's case in Hawaii. Um, this year, that decision was based more about us and not about you. Um, it was, how can we simplify this, simplify the communication, simplify the release of content uh, so that we can, so that we can, we know we can do this the very easiest, most efficient, in most clear way possible. We knew that it would work for most families to go at nine and 10. It covers like 90% of our, of our group. Uh, if we give them access to content at their nine o'clock and, and access to cl class at 10, we knew that there would be this kind of these outliers uh, that it wouldn't work and it wouldn't be preferred. Um, but if you take all those outliers and put them together, it can, it'll make a class, maybe not this year, but next year it sure will. And in, in, in future years, it'll make many classes. And so, so it won't be difficult for us to do that. This year, it just became one of those variables that we thought, let's not change this variable and add this complexity to it, because this is something that we can control and, um, and, and, and clearly communicate. And, and we can plan around it. And we can start working on the training and hiring our coaches right now, because we know exactly when we're going to be doing classes. Um, there were just so many last minute changes that would happen in the previous two years because of this because of this, um, this uh, uh, option, um, families getting to choose when they, when they participate in power, and power instead of us saying, hey, here's our schedule, that we're a school and here's our schedule. And if you wanna participate, this is when we start, which is what most schools do, right? Most live schools say, this is our schedule. And if you wanna join, then we try to be too accommodating in previous years. Now we're not being accommodating at all. There's a place in the middle of where we were and where we're gonna be this year, where we'll settle on in future years. Right. Okay. Um, I had another question, but it left me. I, I'll raise my hand again if I, if I remember it. Okay. Sounds good. Emily. Okay. So I had a couple of different questions. Um, so we actually, um, okay. First of all, I was looking, like I listened to what you'd said about the screen time thing and I thought that was, that seemed really, really important to me. So we've never done any kind of screen time and I love what you've said about it. But at this point, my children don't have any kind of skills. What kind of skills or what kind of like, are they going to need like a touch screen something or just a laptop something? Like more logistical, Great if question. they have never used. Okay. I told them about this program last night, we got the lifetime thing. And I'm just like, this is what we need because we were trying to, we were trying to figure out what we were doing for next year because that was not working very well. But they don't have like any kind of skills with, but I'm like, I need, I'm not, I was shooting the messenger. I'm like, we just, we can't have technology. Yeah. And then that will solve our problem. And then I'm like, when you said that, I'm like, I need to teach them how to use technology. But yeah. because of that, they're like, that's awesome. What are we like, what now kind of things are they going to need? And if they are not like, I have one that just turned eight last month. I'm like, if they're not independent, strong, independent readers, is that going to be a problem or yeah. how much time, like before the prep time, are we going to need? Does that, do those make sense? Yeah, they're, they're in, inside that comment and questions were lots of good questions actually. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to address uh, many of them, but, um, but um, first off, I would say that um, it, we're building this we're building this platform um, around the the preferred device, which will be a tablet. Uh, it could be an iPad, a tablet. So everything will be very simple. That size of screen that we're working off of, it'll be mobile friendly. It'll be certainly on a desktop or a laptop. Will work great. It's just children can navigate tablets with their finger uh, a lot better than, than any other device. Um, and, and it's really small for them. So people who don't have a lot of space, it's also more affordable in many cases. Um, you can get tablets for a hundred bucks. Um, they don't have to all be iPads, right? 
Um, so that's the preferred device, although we're built, it, it's compatible with all sizes of screens. Um, it's just the adventure kind of experience that it is, the path lends itself to something a little bit larger than a cell phone. Um, as a parent, they're, they probably won't uh, know, you know, if they've not, if they've not played around with a tablet much, I would say these kids, it seems like they get, the, they get a hang of it pretty fast and it's not complex. What they're doing on this site is, um, is, is very, very simple and basic. Um, and so, but you'll, you'll be with them, right? And especially your littles and, and, and helping them and it won't take long for them to, to catch on. And even when most parents, I have this feeling that most parents will actually spend a lot more time with them than they think they will right now. They like the idea of them being able to be independent, but the, but the content is so engaging. It is so engaging, even more engaging than Coach Hosh, if you can believe. Uh, it's, it's, it's impressive. And so parents will be there and be able to be helpful. And it's only a 10 minute video that they're, that they're consuming in the research and then maybe a two to three minute uh, reasoning video. And then we give them other places to go exploring. It's all curated content that we've already established as high quality, high craft kind of um, good content. And, and uh, but there are still really important principles of using technology that they'll need to learn. And that is when we're watching a YouTube video, that's where we stop. You know, if I, as a parent, I don't want them to go further than that. I don't want them to click on the next video and, and go exploring on their own. There's ways that you can actually limit that behavior on your iPad. So understanding how to set up those kinds of, those kinds of um, safeguards on your, on your device is also really important. And, when, and, and something that we will be doing before school starts with families and inviting them to a, a tech prep kind of, uh, kind of a webinar where we have some people in our school who have a lot of experience helping parents set up their devices so that they're safe and, 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 um, and just giving them the tools to be tech savvy. Tech wise, what's that book? What's that? Who, who, Deanna, do you remember the presenter who came who wrote the, the, um, what's the, what's the book? His that, book is, his book is called Tech Wise. And Tech -wise. I'm just looking up here his name. Um, I'll get that to you with the numbers that I'm looking for. The last question that I really wanted to, you didn't, I don't know if you asked this question, but I pulled this out of what you were talk, saying. You were talking about, the ones that aren't as strong as readers. Well, level one will be all developed for a non-reader. Level two will be developed for a beginning reader. And level three will be developed for a, um, a capable reader, right? Um, and so it's not just the language that they're using when the teacher's teaching. It's also the kinds of interactions that they'll be presenting, the kinds of questions that they'll be asked. Um, if they can't read, then there'll be a little button that they click on and they can listen to it narrated. Um, uh, so we're, we, we, we're very mindful of the fact that we have to build this in a way that, that supports littles who can't read and, and people from other countries who, where English is a second language and they need, and they need to hear it, um, and, and while they read it, right? Uh, and eventually we'll just translate this into Spanish and Portuguese first and, and, uh, Tagalog sec. Well, what's the, what's the Philipp, Philippine speak? Filipinos speak Tagalog, right? Yeah, that's the third one. Okay, was that, was that helpful, Emily? That, that was, that was what I was trying to, so like, because I unfortunately am not that tech savvy either, which is why I really appreciate the idea of having this where you say, okay, well, let's teach the parents how we need to prevent, because I was like thinking about different things where we've had, we were trying to figure out about signing up for different kinds of classes and they're like, links to this and links to that and kids putting in links that you don't want yeah. so it sounds like you've kind of already yeah you're putting that you're putting the safeguards around that so they're not going to just accidentally wander into somewhere that they are not prepared for. because i would love to be doing it with each one of them but yeah. i can't be with multiple people who can't be in the same place while dealing with multiple <laughs> younger people who need attention to <laughs> yep well you are the best safeguard in your home right and um and you can't be everywhere everywhere so it's I mean, this is well outside of and you already know this everybody knows that it's it's the way we, the way we talk and we communicate and, and what, what's the protocol when they do see something that's inappropriate uh well, they, come and they talk to them. and if you start young these kids will do that i i i've seen it in my own home and 
And it doesn't mean they always will at, at every age, but um, but there's a if there's open communication, and then they will um, they'll be better for it. Thank you. That's and that, so just a basic tablet. Like, does it matter what size of tablet or any just kind of basic tablet? Doesn't matter. But I mean, okay. In my opinion, the bigger the better. Uh, but you know, tablet, okay. tab tablets only get so big. Eleven inches is pro is probably the size of tablet that I would recommend. But there are a lot of nine inch, eight inch tablets as well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Deanna, and then Sal, and then Emma, and then Amber. Okay, so um, first of all, the answers to your questions. The the presenter was Andy Crouch. And his book is The TechWise Family. That's mm -hmm. what you're talking about, right? Yeah, it's the one that we gave away to all of our parents that year, right? Yeah. And then yeah. he came and spoke? I, if he did, I wasn't there. Oh, it was a good pictures, bad pictures. Um, oh, oh, yeah. He came and spoke. That was a really good one. That's a great book, by the way. Good pictures, bad pictures. That's a great one. To, that's a great book for littles, like for your five, six-year-olds to start having that conversation. Yes. Um, as far as students enrolled in Lift Ed, right now we have 346 students enrolled. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, exciting. So my question, Peter, I'm going to invite you to write my chat that I chatted to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, because my question... It is right. It came from questions that I saw in the chat, and I just wanted to not okay. answer you without your the time of it. Pardon? The time that you um, that you asked it. Um, it's in just the personal. Ch oh yeah, that's right. It shows up in all of them. Let me <laughs> let me see what time that was. Uh, oh, it shows up in my general one too. I'm sorry. Okay, that's all right. I'm probably almost. There. Do you want me to chat it again? He chats that you're chatting back to everybody else. That's good. Yeah, go ahead and just chat it again. Um, Jess, please plan a monthly payments. Deanna, oh, direct message. Okay. Okay. A discount for HS on our families, online families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're they're members. That's, yeah. Absolutely. So would you like to answer that question then, oh, yeah, to yeah. everyone? And there's also some others too, Deanna. It's it's not just this. Deanna's asking, what about our current families in HS online? Well, we who've should... never had those. So we have some families who take our full time, full credit to AHS online, middle and high school, but they've never had family school before because they didn't know about us before they came to middle and high school. Yeah. Well, their their investment in this far exceeds what families invest in when it comes to family school. They're paying several thousands of dollars a year per student. They're, so, so of course we should send them all uh, a lifetime, the lifetime discount that, that everyone else, that our lifetime members receive. But we also have several families. You remember all the families who um, helped us with Project Simple? They all received a lifetime membership and they didn't, I don't think we said it that way. I think they are, they're in our system as a complimentary member. Let me ask James about that. Do you think he can find that group or do you have a list? I have a list. There's a Facebook group for, the, for, for all of them. Oh, but perfect. If he just sent me a list of all of our comp members, I could look at that list and I could tell you real fast. Yeah, we need to send this list needs to receive a, the lifetime membership discount as well. And I'm surprised that I haven't been asked already by 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 several of them. Well, I was asked. at least one person asked today in the chat, and that's why that's why I brought it up to you. Thank you so much. That's great. Yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. I'll have Dr. Pablo send out a letter to all of the AHS online families um, okay. with that code, great. and and tell them that if any of them have already signed up, yeah, then we, we can... need to fix that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do have members still who bought a lifetime membership back with a certain code that's no longer recognized by the family school um, site. Um, so, so I don't know if those people also got contacted with the discount and everything. 
Okay, I'll let Deanna, if it's all right, if you can talk with James about that and then just let me know um, how to proceed. Okay, sounds good. That was, I think that does it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Deanna. I think Sal was next and then Emma and then Amber Peterson and then Natalie Huss, is that right? Uh, I love when I see names like Emma, Amber Peterson, Natalie Hess, because you've been with us for so, so long. I know those names. <laughs> okay, Sal, go ahead. Okay, so I know I'm probably the minority because I'm not a lifetime member. We're kind of new to all of this. Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess my question, and I hate to keep asking about money and the discounts and all of this. Um, I know you might have answered it, but because I'm driving... The, the connection's gone in and out. So what, what I'm hearing is that it's better to go and get a lifetime membership right now. And then if you do that, you get the steep discount. Is that correct? I think so, but you can only- so, just... Go ahead, sorry. Well, I, that's it. I, I, I think that's wise. Now, if I had younger children, I would do it for sure, but- um... So it's not just discounted to lifetime members this year. There will be maybe not as steep of a discount, but you're saying in the future, there will always be a discount for so we, lifetime members. Well, for example, every year we offer a spring open enrollment period. We have since the, since the beginning of uh, a family school where we, we discount everything 30%. Um, so there will always be that, that kind of rotation. We don't do a lot of promotions like that we do a back to back to year back to school discount we do a, um, a spring open enrollment we do something from thanksgiving through christmas but that's about that's about it we don't like to over communicate promotions um, just have some that are consistent that families can count on year after year but in addition to that next year i i i'm positive we'll have a discount that we offer to our lifetime members and to our monthly members for those who are well there won't yeah, to our lifetime and, and, and monthly members who didn't sign up for Lift Ed this year, we'll have a discount for them. And it'll be more than 30%. It won't be 75%. It'll be somewhere in between. Okay, I'm just, uh, I asked because if, um, because it's not a full curriculum and we are supplementing other places, it does affect like what we can do and how much we can do. So I'm trying to decide, right? Is it better to get the lifetime and then also you know, or should I just pick it up from this year if they're, if it doesn't carry over? Cause we're, you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what the trade off is, whether it's better to just pay. Yeah, I know. For this I, year or to pay a lifetime membership and then you're going to, you, I guess I'm not communicating it very well. well. You're communicating perfectly. You're just asking me a question that nobody could, could nobody should trust everything that I'm saying there. I could talk to you at <laughs> the day about how much is coming to Lift Ed. But I'm a biased voice in all of this. I'm really excited for people to come to Lift Ed, but I am somewhat biased in that statement. You can only make that decision for yourself. Um, if if it's if it's um, if you trust what we're, what we've done and you trust that we'll continue to do that. Uh, if you ask any founding family who's been with us and what we've done since the beginning and for those founding families, they'd probably tell you you should do this, Sal, uh, because. We know AHS worldwide, and we know they'll keep giving and they'll keep building and they'll keep making things better. They'll never stop, and we never have. Um, no, I, I am actually very excited about the program. I'm. I also am um, um, wanting to add one of my kids to your online program for the seven through twelve. So it's not that I'm not excited, and I don't value it. I'm just. I don't know. It, do I? If I do the lifetime, and then I guess my question was you're going to pay the fee for the lifetime, but then that goes away. And then you're going to be paying for this, for the uplift or lift up or lift dead. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, for the next, however, which I'm, we're okay to like, I think I do see value in the program, um, which is why I want to join. I just don't know. I guess I don't understand the, the, by the, by the lifetime now. And then well, it's, it's just it's going to go away, yeah. right? It's just an ROI. Um, you can do the numbers. I did them actually, and I can't remember what they were exactly, but I think I think it was you 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 get a return on your investment in one year with four children. It takes thirteen months or fourteen months with three children. 
that means you've paid for what you invested in and then everything okay. beyond that you're saving money. So yeah, run the numbers and just look how quickly, uh, you, quickly things, you, make yeah. up, you make up that difference. It's not too, it's not too long with a couple of children, two children was two years, if I remember right. Um, and, and you'll have paid for the $748 that you're paying right now during spring open enrollment if you signed up for a lifetime membership. Oh, I, for some reason I thought it was, I thought that was, it was more. Um, I can't yeah, see it. It's 800. Let me look. When you're, when, when you're doing, um, when you're, when, during May, we do something called spring open enrollment. We discount all of those plans 30%. It should, I did not know that. Okay, that's great. It's one seven. It's a thousand seventy nine times point seven. That's the price right now, and that's seven hundred and some dollars. Okay. No, that that's awesome. And then my my last question. Then I hope I know you have tons of questions in little time. If I have I have two kids and um we're on the East Coast, and if do you are you do you have to do the East Coast timing or can I do one on East Coast and the next one with like Central? You, you could, you could do that. That would be something. Yeah, change I'm not, I know the value is in like, if you want to get together on a Friday with your local group or whatever, there's not a ton of people in Massachusetts who homeschool. It's not going to happen. And, yeah. and then um, also I figure if one of them is in that time, then we will know if there is, you know what I mean? And then at least I can be with kids on at different times. Or when you talked about parents having to do like a parent, be on the parent volunteer then I'm not, you know, it, I don't know. Yeah, you could, you couldn't, you couldn't be in two places, two rooms at the same time. That's for sure. Um, we wouldn't, we're not going to set it up that way to volunteer. Parents will just decide when they want to volunteer, when they're, when they're available to volunteer in one of the oh, okay for their students. But, um, but any, you will, you will automatically be set up in the, in the time zone in which you are. Um, and you'll be, you'll be um, organized in a class with the mm -hmm. families that are the closest to you. So in Massachusetts, you might be going all the way down to Virginia, right? <laughs> For your class. Now you're not gonna get together on a Friday and meet up in Washington, DC. Well, you might, you might every quarter or something like that. That'd be kind of cool, but- um, That would be pretty cool. But if you wanted to be in the central time zone with all your children or one of your children, um, that would just be something we would have to do manually. Uh, it's, it's, it's not going to, the, the system won't be set up this year to allow you to say, uh, I want to move to this one. Whereas in the future, every group will have a code. And when a family wants to move to a different code, we just give them the code or we go in and input that code into their account and, and it automatically connects them with that, with that group there. That's what it will allow us to actually create for you to create your own custom classes. And that's what we hope happens in the future, that these little learning communities get so strong that you start forming your own study groups and your own classes. Um, Using using lift ed, and um, and you, you you might meet you know you might have a group of families that meet at, at your house to do uh, the the lift ed learning experience, and then afterwards you're they're all right there, and now we and now we jump into a discussion together as a class, or we play a game, or we do project together, and we celebrate some way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Natalie. You, you, uh, you're, you're, I can't see you, so I can't see if you're talking, but I don't hear you, Natalie. Okay. Sorry, did you say Natalie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to get ready to leave for a doctor's appointment here. Okay. Um, I just had a quick question um, about um, the other day, you guys had mentioned the uh, um, a possible discount for paying a whole year in advance as well, mm -hmm. um, 10 months instead of 12. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering um, how we how we get that discount. That'll start next year, actually. So this year we'll just we'll just bill everybody monthly. Um, and when we have that available, we'll add that as an option. But this year we're just going to we're just going to allow the the, the monthly payment option. Okay. And then um, I, I just had additional question. I know that we can email Dr. Pablo and kind of find out what's available as far as audit um, for next year. I have an eighth grader, um, so not ninth 
yet that he's been doing the audit program. I really liked that. Um, I guess I, I don't know, my <clears throat> going into the, the full online accredited program, you know, our daughter's been in that this year and I know it's really rigorous. And so I've, I've kind of had concerns in my mind that maybe the lifted program isn't gonna be quite as rigorous, that it would be a really big step up for him transitioning to ninth grade. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that, um, you know, as far as. Yeah, I think that the lift head experience will be, um, should be very comparable as far as the, the rigor of the class is concerned. There will be, there will be something pretty significant in the rigor on that side of it. Um, the content in LiftEd will be stronger, meaning it'll be more engaging because of the mm -hmm. way the content, but that doesn't go to rigor. Rigor is what the child is doing, what the student is doing, and, mm -hmm. the, and the accountability that, um, that is provided. Um, the, um, the accountability will be the same. It will not be required, right, to, to complete an assignment. They'll be encouraged to, just like they, they are in AHS Online uh, right now. Um, the big difference in rigor will be that the assignments in LiftEd will include a project, a production-based activity that is done over a period of two weeks. It's almost like a little mini master project. We have master project that the seventh graders do here. They work on it all year and they present it at the end of the year. Imagine doing something like that, that is um, even perhaps a lot more meaningful because it's a it's, it's a project that, at, that, that has value to someone in their home or in their community or in their family. And those are the kind of projects that we're building into LiftEd. We want LiftEd to have a production, um, we want LiftEd to meet a production objective that, um, that education simply doesn't provide for right now, um, that, doesn't, that doesn't value uh, a real application oriented kind of, uh, of a project. LiftEd will include an assignment. It'll include the typical, you know, print this handout out, do this assignment, write this paper, write this synopsis, write this praises, write this persuasive essay, essay, complete this worksheet, and an activity like we've done in the past. But it will also have another option that will be discussed and encouraged by coaches throughout the two weeks that they're studying world studies, or the two weeks that they're studying history, or the two weeks they're studying science. And I think that's the, going to be the differentiator between AHS Online um, from a rigor standpoint and, um, and Lift Ed. It won't be less, but it could be more. Um, the big difference between Lift Ed and AHS Online for, for, our, for your student will be how they submit the assignment and what a parent can do or, or how a parent can respond. So in AHS Online, they use Canvas to submit assignments and then the parent has the grading function to act as a grader and give the student grades. In LiftEd, the, student, the parent will be able to view the, the student's assignment submitted through a video. They'll, re, they'll actually reteach and tell us what they did and how they did it and they'll show us. That's what a parent will be able to review. A parent could review whatever they do as well. And of course they would if they're producing something. But um, they won't this year, next year they will, but they won't this year give them an actual grade. They might give them a thumbs up, might be able to write um, a response, but there will be no grading function this year. That'll come this year. At some point in version one, grades will be added. It's very possible actually that it won't come in version one. We'll, we'll, we'll save it for version two release um, next fall with an entire built out grade book for parents to use. Um, um, that will be quite nice that parents can use to print off grade cards to do graduation ceremonies with their kids and their family or their co-op or their learning community at the end of the year. Lots and lots of ideas around, around helping parents to be a facilitator, principal in their home rather than a full-time teacher um, while still teaching, but in the moments. I don't know. That's a long answer question, Natalie. Is that helpful? Yeah, no, that's helpful. Um, I'm still trying to kind of gauge, and I know a lot of it is just as a parent how how much you hold them accountable and and all of that as well. 
Um, so, but I think that helps. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Amber, how are you? Okay, there we go. Uh, doing good. Um, so I think you've kind of answered it. I am one of those families with the complimentary lifetime thing, but it doesn't quite convert right. So <laughs> I was going to question about that. I thought, um, I thought we added you all as comp members. So, so Deanna, there are several people in there that are lifetime members Yeah. that, that haven't received a code. Well, yeah. yeah, let me, Amber, is that true? You haven't received a code? I haven't received a code. So that's why, that's why I'm like, when I went to go sign up, it like didn't show me as a lifetime. And I'm like, I better ask. <laughs> Cause yes, it, it doesn't show up normally on my thing. So yeah. It would be really uh, You can hit me up on the chat or okay. the I'll send that to you. Okay. You know yeah. What? So that was my first question. <laughs> and then my second question um, on, so it would be nice, at least for my family, for the content to be available the night before, because we only have one computer for everyone to use. So if I have different levels of kids, like how are they all going to watch it in that hour is probably not going to happen. Um, so that would be my only concern is because I have multiple levels of children, um, how they would all view that in the time frame before their class starts. And then, like I said, then their class is all starting at the same time, but I only have one, one option for them to use. So how does that work out? <laughs> yeah, Amber, so that's just something I've got to talk with the developers about. I can't promise that at the beginning of the year that it will, that we'll be able to, to accommodate it, but uh, there, uh, there, there eventually will be an admin tool for, for, to do exactly what you're talking about. Okay. I, I just know that, and, and I know that this isn't, you. you you don't have any opposition to this other than there's, there, there's no concern about you um, having the students join when their class is joining for that study experience. It's just, you don't have the devices to support it. Um, just know that we are, we built it in a way to encourage them, not require them. This year it will be required because the software just isn't where it needs to be to, 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 to allow otherwise. But the whole goal for us is to make learning so fun together that they want to go together. Gotcha. So that's why we're dropping the content like an like an episode like a new episode of your favorite Netflix or Hulu program. Okay. So that they're waiting for it, and so that they say, "Okay, I can get this at nine o'clock. My class starts at ten, so I want to be here with my class, right, with my study group." And they come to class, and they come to the study group, and they start the lesson, and they have five minutes that count down while they're all just there chatting and having a good time, and and then they have the fun the Kahoot style review game that they start with and then they jump on this learning path together they're answer, they're responding to questions that the teacher asks and video chat back and forth and and we want to make it we, we want to make it the kind of experience that encourages students to go together uh, thus the tagline all together now right we want to put an end to, we want to put an end to online independent study um, that's one that, that's going to be one of our kind of our our stakes in the ground for lift ed is that we aren't independent study we're not online school at least not the at least not the kind that you use during covid and not the kind that everybody else is providing it's something quite a bit different and it's quite a bit different because of how it connects people while they're learning it doesn't have to be a lonely proposition learning online technology can solve that problem but it can only solve that problem if students are going together. And so that's why, we've, that's why we're releasing content the way that we are. That's why we're building the platform the way we are. So that your, your kids say, mom, I wanna, I wanna do this at nine o'clock, right? With the rest of my study group, <laughs> um, because I have this kind of an experience and because that girl's cute or because that guy's my friend or because all the reasons that kids are gonna wanna be together, right? And those are all great, those are all good things. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that answers that then. <laughs> there are no hands up. This is amazing. <laughs> Do, should I go back to my document? I mean, I, I really would like to be done at 4.30 if, uh, if that's okay. Um, so uh, Peter, can we just clarify that you're speaking 4.30 in nine minutes? You are on Eastern time. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. So <laughs> Nine more minutes is what he's saying. Two more hours. Not two more hours. I'll be gone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh boy. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? I've got to clear up one um, question that was asked in the first webinar. April, you're here. And, um, and we've had a conversation about how your families will access content um, after the year's over. And April said, April answered that response based on a conversation that we had that we were, that we were discussing um, uh, just a few weeks ago, actually, about hosting all of the, these videos that, uh, that your students will be sharing. Um, and it wasn't quite accurate of the way that I feel right now and, um, and, and, the, and, and what we're planning on doing. And it's no fault of hers. Um, it's just, there are lots of ideas that we're throwing around. And, um, and that's why we have a pilot so that we can understand how do you feel about this? Um, and if you feel strongly that it needs to be some way different than what we're doing, then, then that, that's important to us and we need to, and we need to fix it especially if it's something that a lot of people feel strongly about. And I think this is something that a lot of people will feel strongly about. The question was asked, can we access content? Can we ask access the content of these courses after this year's over? And what about all of the videos that my student submits in response to the questions that the teacher asks along this learning path? What happens to those? Well, we have thought about the fact that there is going to be a tremendous amount of data that we're hosting. Uh, that, that, that is data that is, is likely not something that, um, that parents will ever go back and review or want to review. Um, and we don't know for sure if that's the case, but we, we think that's possible that uh, when a student finishes up a year, um, they'll have participated in about 180 or something learning paths and along those learning paths, they may have responded to a couple questions that the teachers asked, over 300 little videos between, the, between 15 seconds and a couple minutes even will be on there of every student. And so you can imagine um, several hours of, of video per student will be on that, will be hosting that um, at the end of the year. We don't really know what that's gonna cost right now. Uh, we have to do some analysis on that we have to understand those, those costs a little bit better. One of the ideas that we had was uh, maybe we offer families an, a, a, a way to, at the end of the year, simply request a copy that is digitized in a file of all the recordings that a student submits uh, that they can simply download and have as safe, for safekeeping. Uh, and and uh, where rather than host all that content in, in, inside of the, uh, the course that they took. Now that takes away a student's ability to go back and review the course in a future year and see how they responded to questions. I don't know how many students will do that, but we'll find out at some point. And if there are a lot of students that do that and then we find value in that, then, then that's something that we, that's, that's a cost that we need to incorporate into the service. And, and so it, we, might, we might charge a little more for that, for that particular service. Um, um, we might change the price, right, of a, of a service overall. It might go from $88 to $98 because we say, you know what, a lot of families wanna have access to all the content and all the videos. And so this is what it's gonna cost. Let's, let's, let's adjust the price to accommodate for that. Now, if we did that, you would pay a little more too. Um, you keep your discount for life. It doesn't mean you keep your price for life, right? So if we come, if, if we add something where we feel this has, this has substantial costs associated with it, like storing and hosting data, or maybe supporting another class, then we might, we might um, raise the price um, uh, to, uh, let's say it's $98. Well, if you're paying $22, then you'll be then paying $24, right? So you'll still keep the discount that you have. It doesn't mean your price doesn't change. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Now, as far as like you accessing content from previous years, um, that's, that's likely going to be something that every family would like to do. And there's no additional costs for us to continue to allow you to, to access content from a previous year. Frankly, we'll probably re redo a, a lot of the content by the time you get, we get back around to it in four more years. So um, each course, as you participate in those courses, will be cataloged in some kind of a library where you'll be able to go back and review that content. Um, uh, if you wanna participate, you know, for example, if you, if you um, have time in the summertime and you want your kids to be doing something that's productive, you might say, go back and review the zoology unit on 
invertebrates, in which case you'd be able to do that. So, um, so I wanted to clear that up just, just so that you know that once the year's over, I think April mentioned that the content would be wiped and we'd start over with a new course. Half of that's correct. We will have a new, new courses for all these subjects next year, but the content that you, um, the courses that you participated in from the previous year will be there, probably cataloged as 2022-23 school year courses. And the next year it'll be 2023-24 school year courses. And so you'll be able to see previous year's content and the year that you're, that you're, you're currently participating in. Peter, as far as it stands right now, I have a question from Emily in the chat. She wants to know if responses of children, if those are gonna be able to be downloaded off of the site for them to maybe share with family members or whatever. Oh, um, that's, that's, a, that, that's the same, same answer, Molly. Uh, the, content that's, the content that's coming in from family members, it would probably not be, um, it probably we would probably not want to store that beyond the year, um, but we would want to give families a way to uh, to have a copy of it, and that's really simple. I mean, it's not it's not simple to develop it, but it's simple to do it right. If if at the end of every year we give them a a, a link for every course that their child participated in, a download link, and they click on it, and and it's taken all their three hundred. It'd probably be by course, actually, to be real honest. It would probably be categorized by course, by unit, by lesson, and they could just go in there and they could click on each of them. And so it'd be more of like an archive rather than a compilation of all their of all of their videos. Um, in fact, that's exactly how it would be. It wouldn't compile them. It would just kind of archive all of their videos into a download file that they would download. And the same could the same would be the case for for the, uh, the golden envelope messages that come in from friends and family into their content. Yeah, Emily. So would that be able to be something? So we have a couple of programs that we are in that allow us to do some of this where we have to submit assignments. So would we be able to like take those like during the week or sometime and just take like a snapshot of it or take like the response that they've given for something they've earned, dur learned during the week, instead of waiting till the end of the year, could they like, okay, well, this is something I learned this week, be able to download that to say, this is what I did this week. Absolutely. I mean, we're hosting it. Okay. So you can download it. Uh, we just, it's, it's always, how do you download it? What, you know, when will the button be available for you to click download of that instead of just viewing it? Um, that's, that's, the, that's the question that I can't answer that because I'm not a developer. If James is here, James could say, oh, I could do that in five minutes. Or he might say, that's actually pretty complicated. Uh, that, might, that might take some time and it might not, it not be, might, might not be highest on the priority list until January of next year. I don't know. I really don't know. But, uh, but that will, that's the, we have to make that a, we have to make that possible for families because many families do have to take things into the district, right? And show them what they're doing. They have to have a record of what they're learning. And, and in our case, that those records are going to be videos, right? They're not gonna be papers. There might be papers too, but it, almost in all cases, they're going to be, even if they're writing a paper, they're going to also submit a video about what they wrote about. They might read the poem that they wrote or read the paper that they, that they wrote. Um, because that reteach component is so important uh, to retaining learning. And, and again, one of the kind of one of the underlying objectives of this production objective that we have is to, is to promote retention through reteaching. And when a student turns their camera on and they say, okay, today I learned about this, or today, today I did this project, have a look at it. They're reteaching when they do that. So it's a powerful principle for retaining knowledge. Thank you, that answer. Yeah. Well, there are actually, I'm glad that we did it the way that we did it today uh, because there are several questions that, that, um, that were on this list that, um, that weren't asked here. So they must not be um, super common questions. And then some of them are just really good detailed, very specific questions that Molly and others have sent me. We're gonna keep working on this FAQ document 
and um, and we'll send that around soon. Of course, we'll send this. Hi, Heidi's daughter. <laughs> I can't not say anything to this cute little girl. Can you say hi? What's your name? Hi. Hi. What's your name? Annabelle. You're Olivia. Annabelle. Oh, Annabelle. Annabelle. Oh, so cute. Hi, Annabelle. Thanks for joining us. You, you know, this reminds me, Heidi, of uh, something that a member said. I was on Facebook responding to a question that somebody had, and I read a, a comment to another question, and she said, I wasn't planning on doing Lift Ed this year, but I showed the video to my kids, and they're really excited about it. And I thought, what a brilliant idea. That video is not even great for kids. We could make a really good video for kids that really show kids. Uh, what they're going to have, what, what they're going to experience from the perspective of kids. Now, it's not so easy for us to do it right now because it's all prototyped, right? We don't have lots of kids doing this, but this year we will, we'll definitely have to produce a video that's, it's like intentional. It got my kids excited. We watched it together because I needed to watch it. And I was like, just come watch it with me. And yeah. Oh, what did I, I wish I would have, I wish I would have on our first uh, webinar, I wish I would have just encouraged families to, to watch it with their kids. But it does give me a, another idea that we need to produce a video and, and intentionally there's not a single adult talking the entire time. <laughs> it's just kids talking about their experience and what they love. You guys ever watched the old uh, video from the mouth of babes that the church did back in the 70s? Oh my goodness, it, that is the cutest video ever. I love that video. What is that one part? If Hannah had a baby, a baby, a baby. If Hannah had a baby, you remember this? Oh my goodness, you gotta watch this. Look it up on YouTube. And the interviewer, <laughs> the interviewer says, what does that have to do with whatever the principal he was asking him about? And she looks and she goes, I don't know. <laughs> it was the cutest, cutest look on her face. He asked a question about Joseph Smith or Satan or something, some, I don't remember what it was, but she goes off just randomly singing this song and what does that have to do with this? <laughs> All right, that's the way we're gonna leave this webinar today. In the mouth of babes, look it up. We're gonna do our own version of it <laughs> next year, part two. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody for being here. I will um, stop this recording and we will um, we'll post this one as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peter. Yep. Thank you. Bye now, everyone.